Good morning, Lisa Evola here from Creative Soldiers. And I want to talk a little bit today. This could be really short. Um, I know that we did a supply video on Monday, uh, which was maybe a little bit lengthy because we were talking about all the different supplies. I think it was Monday, maybe it was last Friday. Not sure. Uh, but I did want to go over a little bit more about uh, the supplies for the book that we're going to be creating uh, on Memorial Day uh, for this summer series that we're going into here starting June 6th. So I have two books. So I've been going back and forth. Do I want just one book? Is two books too many? Um, do I want them to be the same? Do I want them to be different? And there are a lot of reasons to go both ways with that. <clears throat> but what I've decided is that for, uh, for the main book that we're going to use for um, our tutorials and for our sketchings and our paintings and our um, explorations in nature. Um, I am going to do a Japanese side sewn binding. So I think these are really, really cool. Uh, they have a very, very interesting spine. This is uh, just some silk ribbon that I had torn up from a sari that I purchased at, I don't know, the Salvation Army or a thrift store of some sort. And uh, <clears throat> the spine or the end part here is covered in fabric that I like. And this is just an old painting on some really, really heavy cardboard. So we did talk about this before. But I love the format, how the book opens completely up. And uh, this is a previous journal that I was working in. And how I can put all different sorts of single pages in. So versus a book where you have your papers all folded together and um, those pieces of paper are all, those little packets, um, are all sewn together and then they're bound into to a book. Um, I thought it might be a little bit lengthy and a little hard to understand. Sewing books um, on a camera can be uh, kind of hard to do because, well, just because you can't, you're only seeing uh, one dimension of it. Anyway, you don't need to know all that. So Japanese side sewn binding. I taught this to kindergartners. So you absolutely, kindergartners in first grade, although they did kind of have a hard time with it, but I think you can totally do this. So I want to talk about this. First of all, the supplies that I'm gathering for my book. Now, you can make this absolutely any size you like. You can use um, a heavy piece of watercolor paper like I did here. This is like a 300-pound um, cotton rag paper. So it comes from one of those really big sheets where it has all the rough edges, and um, it's, it's a handmade paper. It's, it doesn't come out of a book or anything like that. So it's really, 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 really heavy, which makes it ideal for this kind of a cover because although you have a little bit of bend to it, um, it's going to hold its structure so you don't have to worry about it tearing or anything like that. Or, and this is what I'm going to do, you can use an old book cover. So I have this book that somebody gave me, and there's nothing inside of it. I had cut the insides out long ago and used them for something else. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, and I love to use these kinds of books, uh, or bo the book covers. I like to make them into new books. So if you know me at all, I do not, uh, 
I don't buy journals. I make my own journals um, because I like the idea that I can put in whatever kind of papers that I want uh, or fabrics or um, artist papers, handmade papers, uh, uh, <laughs> dyed papers, you know, with the uh, botanically dyed papers, uh, all sorts of different uh, ways that you can go with that. Um, but I want to focus the, uh, the papers that I'm putting inside of my book. I want to focus on, um, I want to focus on what we're actually going to be doing in this summer season, in this season of sowing seeds and bearing fruit. So that is the official name of this. Uh, and I haven't been very good about relaying that. Um, but the idea is that we're going to do a little bit of this. We're going to do a little bit of that. We're going to take these creative things, um, these creative seeds, and we're going to sow them into our hearts. And over the process of uh, practice and working on these things, we can um, bear fruit. So the, the bearing of the fruit would be eventually a, a fiber piece, or it might be uh, it might be a watercolor painting or an oil painting or whatever it is that your takeaway from this is. So I'm going to be using this really enormous book and it's approximately, I want to say, um, maybe 14 by 18, something to that effect. And I will take off the, I'm going to cut it apart. So I'm going to take off the binding, but I'm not going to do that quite yet because I want to show you on Monday how I um, keep from having those bare edges. So like when you cut a book cover that was already a book, uh, when you cut it apart and cut the two covers apart, you have, uh, you have an edge that is um, cardboard. You can see the cardboard that is actually the in, inner portion of that book. So I'm going to show you on Monday how to how to cut this apart so that you don't have that naked cardboard piece there. Now you might not care if you have that, and a lot of times I don't like this um, this book that I made here. Uh, has has the the cardboard edges and it's just the sketchbook that I keep inside my bag uh, when I'm in the car and um, do some doodles when I see things that I want to do and uh, and I don't I don't mind if it gets a little bit grungy looking I actually kind of like that look but you know it's not everybody's cup of tea so again. Japanese side sewn binding. So we're you you need a book cover or a heavy piece of paper or a heavy work of art that you can use as the cover, something that's not going to tear preferably and that will hold up to uh, opening and closing and usage. Um, in addition to that, you're going to need a box cutter, um, a hole punch, a pretty heavy hole punch. Um, if you're using a book cover because you're going to need to um, put holes in this. And I use, <laughs> I use this because uh, it is a really heavy duty and I can put a hole right through it. So, um, okay, so depending on the size book. Now you can do a really small one. You can do a really large one. I like the idea of having a lot of room to experiment with the things that we're doing. Plus, um, I think it's really helpful for me to be able to, uh, to do something a little bit larger. Um, but you don't have to, you know, for video purposes. 
but you don't have to do anything this large. Um, sometimes that's a little bit daunting if you don't do a lot of drawing or painting or whatever. Um, then filling this page might be a bit of a stretch for you. So choose a size that you're comfortable with. Um, I am actually going to bind mine along this side, which is going to make my book cover sideways, but it's totally okay. I, I don't mind that. Um, if that's an issue for you, choose appropriately. Maybe, maybe you want to use one of these covers and cut this in half and I can show you, you can use the same idea of um, what we're gonna cover on Monday about uh, covering that edge. But you could cut it in this way, use one side for the front, one side for the back, and then it would be, it would be sitting up uh, correctly. But um, I don't mind if it's, if it's sideways. I think it's actually kind of cute. And I really like all of these penguins. I think it's interesting. Um, I kind of like the back. This would be a great place to uh, put some gesso in and um, paint something else. I'm not really sure. I may actually use the back as the front. I don't know. So that is entirely up to you how you want to do that. But then you want to choose paper. Now this is a great way to uh, bind single pieces of paper. Most most of the time when you're making a book, they're folded pieces of paper or fabric or whatever it is that you're doing and then they're sewn together. Uh, binding single pieces is a lot more difficult, um, and, but that's what we're going to do. And the Japanese side sewn binding is perfect for that. So what I've chosen for my paper um, is kind of to focus on, I, I want to put in papers that um, are going to be relevant to the supplies that we're going to be using, which are really like a, a lot of them. So there's watercolors, so you'll have, want to have watercolor paper or a mixed media paper. Uh, there's going to be pastels, which mixed media paper works for that uh, as well, or drawing paper. Um, you can also use craft paper with, uh, with the charcoals, um, not so much the pencil really, but a darker charcoal works great on the craft paper. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of wet. So, uh, you know, consider that you want to, um, make sure that you have paper for the different types of supplies that we're going to be using. So there's also acrylics and oils that we're going to be touching on and um, maybe even some slow stitching. Kind of really like the idea of that. So fabric is totally making its way into my book. So it's going to be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday will be live. Wednesday and Friday, it's possible. Um, I think I explained in my last live that we're taking care of my father-in-law. Um, and we kind of all have to share in those duties. So I'm really not sure what kind of crazy that's going to make my summer. So um, I may be uh, videotaping some of these, but they will be released on Wednesday and Friday. Monday, I will be here live um, every Monday throughout the summer. Uh, so for, for the first two weeks, we're going to be doing pencils and pencil and graphite. Second two weeks is colored pencils and uh, pastels. The third two weeks is watercolors and watercolor pencils. Uh, the fourth two weeks is acrylics. I might do acrylic. I might lump the acrylics and oils. And then those last two weeks that which are the first two weeks of August, um, we may do some uh, inks and slow stitching. So I'm kind of really excited about that one. I, I love fabric. Um, it's just, it's really a joy to work with. So um, I have some mixed media paper and this is 14 by 18, something like that. Um, but it is bigger than my book. 
So it maybe it's a 14 by 24 or I don't know. So anyway, it's bigger than my book, so it'll totally work. So I have that. I have, and I have six pieces, so I'm going to put six pieces in just to make sure that I have enough to do every, um, all of the, all of the days, uh, over the two week period, um, that we're, that we're going to be working. Um, I may even put a couple more in just for good measure. Um, I have four pieces of, now this is a drawing paper, um, in oyster, I believe the color is called, and this is enormo paper. So if I cut this in half, it makes it the same size as that last paper that I showed you. So um, I probably won't put all of it, maybe six pieces of this. I may add another three or four pieces of the mixed media paper because so many different things can be used on that. Um, I have some Bristol paper that I'm going to throw in. Uh which is basically a drawing paper, but it's really heavy, um, almost like a cardboardy kind of a thing, but it has a really, really smooth satiny finish, um, which makes it really nice for um, colored pencils and regular pencils and charcoals, but um, you can't use water on it because it'll mess up the, uh, the surface of that paper. I also have some watercolor paper here, which is also enormo. And um, I want to say that this is probably about a, um, it might be a 300, but I'm thinking it, it's probably like a 225 uh, in weight. So, because it's really, it's really heavy, but not too heavy. Uh, not like the the cover of the other one that I was showing you. Um, and I do have some uh, Artist Loft makes actually some really decent uh, watercolor paper. And this is a, an 11 by 15, which, okay. So this has the measurements on it and it is perfect. So this book is 11 by 15. So my book is going to be 11 by 15. But you have to figure with the Japanese side sewn binding, you're going to lose a couple of inches along the edge where everything is uh, is sewn together. So um, your uh, drawing surface is going to be a little bit smaller than that. I have... Do, 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 do. I have some craft paper. So this just comes from um, the packaging store. And uh, it comes in a roll. I'm gonna have to probably cut the pieces and either iron them or um, put them under some books and get them kind of flat so that they're not rolling up every time I open my book. Um, but I like to uh, to work on the craft paper sometimes. So I wanna put at least a couple of pieces in there, probably not too many, um, but a couple so that I can, uh, you know, kind of experience some of that, um, of how all of my implements are gonna work on that. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to use, now I think we talked about it in the supply part, um, I have, this is, this is an artist canvas that's unprimed. Now you can get loose canvas that's already primed. Um, I like to get the unprimed because then I can put on it what I want. So maybe I'll put a watercolor ground on it because I want to um, do watercolors on this canvas. Or um, I could do a clear gesso so that I can see the weave of the fabric or put nothing on it at all and um, maybe do some stitching on that. So I'm going to just cut them to size and put them in. You can also use like a, a natural or a white um, denim 
uh, or a, a, a canvas. You don't really want to use something that like an outdoor canvas because it has like at Joanne Fabrics, you can get outdoor canvas that has patterns and stuff on it, which you can use it, but it has um, sizing or some sort of a finish on it that I'm really not sure how that would work with uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, supplies that we're going to be using. So I would definitely go for something natural um, and uncoated. Uh, so for my book, that's pretty much it. I want to make sure that I have at least one piece for um, each of the days that we're doing it. So if you figure there are um, 10 weeks all together, three days a week, so that's 30 pieces of paper. So you're gonna wanna put 30 pieces of paper in, in your book, um, which is a pretty, pretty hefty book, but uh, especially if you have a lot of thicker um, papers in there or fabrics or whatever it is that you're putting in. But I think it's gonna be really, really incredible. So the second book that I wanna do, um, I probably won't do on Monday. I think I'm going to do it as a video and put it in, um, put it in the uh, the group on Wednesday or Friday, maybe maybe Friday. So I'll give you you know Monday and Wednesday to kind of get the other book together, and then on Friday this should be um, maybe a little bit easier. We'll do um, we're gonna do something like this one, okay? Nice and easy peasy, very simple uh, to do. You will need some um, adhesive, like an Eileen's Tacky Glue works. Mod Podge really isn't thick enough. You need something kind of heavy, like an Eileen's or a book binding glue. Um, Eileen's is probably your cheaper, cheaper option. Um, some fabric. Okay, to go around, so if you notice, here you could see it better in this one. If you notice, there is fabric going around the outside of um, the papers that are in here. Okay, uh, so my thoughts is, this is the book that I want to use. I'm not gonna worry about being nice to uh, the edges or anything like that because this is just a sketchbook um, and I might even make a uh, a bookmark for my book from the spine because it's a nice wide spine and it's really kind of cool. So it's the Bronco Rider Boys down in Arizona. <laughs> I don't know. So I think I got it at a garage sale somewhere and it's a pretty beat up looking book but I love those. Those are my those are my thing, they're my jam. Okay, so anyway, this is why I chose the colors that I chose. So I have a piece of uh, wool felt here to go around the edge of the book inside, which I think will look uh, very nice. And to do these, these tabs here, I'm gonna use, and see this one I did the same thing. I'm going to use the same fabric. So this is a really heavy um, linen. So it's not a, uh, it's more of like a canvas type linen. So it's really heavy. It's not um, a, like a garment weight uh, linen, which is, you know, it has more movement to it. So this is more for like making bags or, you know, that kind of thing. So I love, the colors, I think they all look really, really nice together. And that's going to be for that second book. Now my second book is also going to have some of those other papers in it. Um, maybe some of my little scrap pieces. You don't necessarily have to worry about um, if they're smaller or anything like that. All of the pages can be, you know, larger than the others or smaller than the others, and, you know, it'll be kind of cool. But I have some little pieces of the, the fabric. I have some old artworks um, that I did with my grandson. 
Uh, he did some of it. I did some of it. I think it'll be a lot of fun to put that in. And then I have the blank backs that I can use. Um, I have some parchment paper, which I love. It's kind of weird to work on, but a lot of fun. Love the sound. Has a very cool sound to it and a great feel. Um, I'm a very tactile person, so I love all of that. Uh, all the feels, you know, I mean, they appeal to me more so than um, the visual sometimes. I'm going to use some uh, some fabric that I had tea stained or I think there was some sort of a, a blue flower that I had used in this one as well. So um, there's some blue imprints on here. So I'm going to use that because I think it'll make some really cool, probably slow stitching in that one. So this is my practice journal, right? This is from a botanical printing. Um, I will probably put that in there. Again, I think it's really interesting. The black is from iron. I used uh, uh, a railroad tie as a mordant for the... Um, for that dye bath. Um, I have just some card stock that I'd like to put in. These are fine for non-wet mediums, um, but I like it kind of has that parchment look to it, and I like that. And then I have some two-sided um, scrapbook paper, and it's really, really heavy, so I'll probably cut this one up into a couple of pieces uh, and put that in as well, as well as some of the, um, you know, the drawing paper and maybe some watercolor paper and just kind of to mix it up and make it really, I love mixed paper journals. They're just really, really interesting um, to me. And I love to do all different sorts of things all in the same book. Uh, and I, I find it very inspiring, especially when I go back and look at some books that I've done in the past. Okay, so that is pretty much it for um, today for that book class, which is Monday morning, uh, right here, 9 o'clock. promise I'll be here at 9. I'll have everything all set out and ready to go in a clear space. I had to actually clear a space today because it's been chaos in my studio. Um... If you guys don't have any questions, I guess I don't have anything further to say. Uh, it, so gather all of your stuff for your books. If you only want to do one book, that's totally fine. Do the one on Monday. If you want to do the mixed paper, um, you know, little personal size book that you can take, you know, keep in your car, or put in your bag or whatever, so you can uh, do stuff along the way as you're inspired, then definitely engage with that second book. Um, the first two weeks, again, is drawing. So if you didn't get the lowdown on all of the supplies that we'll use for those first two weeks, so it's drawing, which is mechanical pencils, charcoal pencils, loose charcoal, stabilos, blah, 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 blah. That was Friday. I think it was Friday. It might have been Monday, but I'm pretty sure it was Friday. I don't know. It is probably just a couple videos down from here. And there is a supply list that you can, in the files section, that you can download um, just to kind of, so you have a reference there. So the last thing I wanted to say is this is going to take a commitment. So this idea of um, forming habits and doing something um, every day creatively is really what is going to take you from where you are right now to where you want to be uh, as far as that creativity. And it will also help you to discover um, what your unique creative expression is. Um, a lot of people are really good at copying others, but um, but really don't know who they are creatively. So that's kind of what this is. Part of this process is discovering who you are, discovering what you love to do, 
and um, engaging with that on a regular basis. So it's those those little steps every single day, even if you don't complete an entire page uh, in a day, you can work on it all week long. And I think that's absolutely valid. Uh, you know, use the time that you have. Um, you know, yeah, we talked about studios. There's a couple videos down there. <laughs> Watch them. I don't remember. Everything is just like this big blur right now. Um, so the last thing is, if you are committed, if you are in, put in the comment section below, I am in. And I will see you on Monday to make those books, uh, or to make that one book, and then the following Friday to make the second book. And then that next Monday is when we begin sowing seeds and bearing fruit. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day. It's kind of rainy here in Michigan, but, um, but that's okay. I kind of like rain. It's very soothing sometimes. So have a wonderful day, you guys. Love you. See you guys on Monday. <laughs> Bye.